Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're so glad you're here this morning. Next week, Star State Nation Bible School, and we are excited about this opportunity that our church has not only to uh, minister to and evangelize to our own children who are part of our children's ministry, but also to our community. Our registration is open. It is online. If you know anybody who would like to come, ages three through just finished grade five, uh, please encourage them to go online. Monday and Thursday night, um, and so that Chris has worked really hard in that to make that a seamless process, and we appreciate that. Um, I will have a quick, an emphasis on quick meeting for all VBS volunteers right after church, right down here, right after the service. So just to hand out some things and make sure everybody has the same information. So if you're going to volunteer with VBS, and if you haven't signed up to volunteer with VBS, please let me know because I can still put you somewhere because we have lots of things that need to be done. In fact, we have out in the vestibule some yard signs. There's The signs are there and next to it is a box with the stakes. If you live in a neighborhood around here, or our, our idea is to put them at the entrances of neighborhoods in the surrounding area, um, or if you can put it in your yard if your HOA allows that, um, we would love for you to take a sign and put it out for us. I just ask that you remember where you put that sign so that you can pick it up and bring it back to the church when VBS is over. I don't know about you, but that's my big pet peeve around election time, that it'll, the election's over six months and we're still talking about who was running and lost. So let's, let's be good stewards of that. We're also trying to do this instead of going door to door and doing door hangers because many or most neighborhoods have no solicitation policies and we don't want to be the ones that ignore, ignore those, those rules. rules. So, so if we can, if you can help us out, out take a yard sign, put it out, it out for us, that, that would be great. great. Help, help us get the word out. Also, after, after the service, service, some of our kids, kids are going to be out here passing out some prayer cards, cards with little candy, candy on them to help you have a prayer guide as we prepare for BBS. Um, so please take one of those. Also this week, we have our Nerf and Nacho night for our kids. Um, we, will we will start, start at 6 30 and go to 8 we'll start in the fellowship hall with a nacho bar um, and then we'll have our nerf battle in the gym and so all the nerf bullets and goggles will be provided for everybody just bring your own nerf guns there'll be some extras of those and we will even have something for the little kids so um, younger than kindergarten so if you want to come out and bring your kids we would appreciate um, just the support and having a great time with our kids we're gonna get to worship this morning um scott is out of town he's at a training that he goes to every year and um so i'm filling in for him but we are excited you are here and i hope that you've come that you swam here this morning um or, or paddled however you got here in this rain that we so, so desperately need but i know there was a lot of it so i'm glad you're here and i hope you've come with a heart a heart of worship Ready, ready to sing praises, praises to our God. Let's, Let's pray, pray, and then the, the choir's going to open us in worship. Jesus, Jesus I, just I just thank you so much for this day, day and the, the privilege we have to come together, to fellowship together, together and to enter, enter into your presence. presence. The Bible the tells us to enter into your, into your presence, presence with joy and thanksgiving. And God, we thank you for the rain. We thank you for bringing people here safely. We are joy, joyous in your presence because you make all things new. You have promises for us that are eternal. You love us like no one else. And I pray that we will fall before you this morning in our worship and bring glory to you. It's in your son's name. Amen.
to move, and I don't know what is going to. Please, so stand up and sing with us, and let's sing to God be the glory, great things he has done.
that you are a child of God, you were chosen, you were not forsaken. Let's just sing a cappella that chorus one more time, if y'all can put that. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Don't forget your freedom that is found only in Christ. Who the sun sets free always free Can you thank this praise team and Kim for leading us today? Would you do that? Amen. Thank you. So good to see you today. We missed you last week, and uh, we thought about you while we were sitting on the side of the road waiting for AAA. Thank the Lord for AAA. And uh, so uh, we got all that car all taken care of and fixed up, and I can assure you I am ready to preach today, all right? So this has been in the hopper for two weeks, and I can promise you that my prayer life is caught up because Pat drove us in today, all right? And so uh, I love her with all of my heart. Heart, but boy, I wish there was another set of brakes on the passenger side, all right? And uh, we got here in record time today. But so good to see each of you. We dearly, and I'm not just saying this, we dearly missed being here last week. But uh, I'm so grateful that uh, uh, there are so many in this fellowship uh, that God's got his hand on, that God is using. And uh, I just appreciate Brother Joy so much. And, uh, you know, I, I told him this week I appreciate him just stepping in. And I know it was so quick. It was on the spot. And uh, there's a passage in the Bible that says to be in season, right? Be ready. And, uh, and brother, you were and you are always. And uh, I thank the Lord for that. And uh, just appreciate him so very much. Hey, before I open up the scriptures, I want to remind you that uh, online, and I appreciate Donna putting this online, and also there's some copies of this that you can grab hold of. But seven prayers for the church. And I want to use this for the next little while. And I really want you using this as a guide to help you really think about praying for the church. All right? And uh, so you're going to be praying for the pastor search team. Pray for this period that God's going to use it in a great way. And more than just to look for the next pastor. But that the Lord would teach us to draw close to himself. All right? The second thing is just praying for a move of God in the body during this time. To pray for consistency and focus in ministry. To pray for just a, a great sense of love and unity among the body. To pray for, you know, God's timing is perfect. Amen? Well, that was weak as all get out. I know it's wet outside, but my soul, it's dry in here, all right? So God's timing is perfect. Now, now, I, I do believe, believe that, that sometimes, sometimes, let's just be honest, honest it's just, just us here today, today right? Sometimes, sometimes I have questions about that, right? Thinking, Lord, I'm not sure your time is perfect because if I were in charge, but guess what? I'm not in charge, right? And he is. And so we pray and await for his perfect timing and that God will just make the necessary changes in me, necessary changes in you and his body, and then just great unity as God moves forward. And so I just think there are seven things that, that we all can join together in and pray for. And I believe that that will be time well spent. Well, we've been in the book of Nehemiah for quite some time now, and we're all the way up to chapter six, okay? We are flying through this thing. So if you've got a copy of God's Word, look with me in Nehemiah chapter 6. And so you know that Nehemiah received a burden from the Lord and began to act upon that burden, that call, that sense of calling and duty. And, and any time there is spiritual advancement, there will always be satanic opposition. We are in a war. Do you understand that, church? We are really in a spiritual war. The Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh 
and blood. But we know that there is an enemy and that enemy is real. And so Nehemiah has, has been following God, bathing everything in prayer. And as God is moving, the, the enemy has been stirred up. And they've tried all kinds of things. They've tried ridicule. They've tried force. Uh, they've tried fear and slander and intimidation. All kinds of things. And what you're going to have in Nehemiah 6 is another attempt of the enemy me to just, just uh, yeah, but, but it's, it's a little more sub. sub. This, this one's a little, little bit more sub, sub. And, and it's it's it's, it's being distracted, distracted. And, and, and become so distracted you become, you become very careless in your Christianity. Christianity. I could have entitled this message today, Careless Christianity. I, I didn't do that. I, I thought about using the, the, the title of being faithful in adversity. And I, and, I, and I really wasn't even sure about that, although I believe in that, that we should be faithful even in the season of adversity. But where I landed on this particular one a couple of weeks ago was the idea of discernment. Because, because what you're going to see in Nehemiah 6, 6 is the man of God using some, some, some solid, solid spiritual, biblically-based discernment about what was really going on around him. And so I've chosen to title this message, Discernment in Adversity. If you found your place, Nehemiah 6, I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we honor the reading of God's Word. As a matter of fact, hold your Bible up and say this with me. This is the Bible. It's God's holy, infallible, inerrant, perfect, life-giving, life-changing Word. Now, when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arab and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall, and that there was no breach left in it, although up to that time I had not set up the doors in the gates. Sanballat Geshem sent to me saying, Come and let us meet together at Capephron and in the plain of Ono. But they intended to do me harm. And I sent messengers to them saying, I'm doing a great work and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? And they sent to me four times in this way. And I answered them in the same manner. And in the same way, Sanballat for the fifth time sent his servant to me with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, it is reported among the nations and Geshem also says it that you and the Jews intend to rebel. That is why you are building the wall. And according to these reports, you wish to become their king. And you have also set up prophets to proclaim concerning you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah, and now the king will hear of these reports. So, come and let us take counsel together. Then I said him saying, no such things as you say have been done, for you are inventing them out of your own mind. For they, for they all wanted, wanted to frighten us, thinking, thinking their hands will drop from their work, and it, it will not be done. But now, O oh God, strengthen my hands. Father God, today we come before you. God, thank you for the privilege and the great blessing of being able to assemble here today. God, thank you for every person that's here, every person, God, that may watch online this week. We pray, God, that you would just truly speak to our hearts in such a real and passionate way. Father, I pray that our minds could have been so full of so many different things. But God, I pray that in the next few minutes, you will just allow us to concentrate upon you, to concentrate upon your word. God, I do believe that you have a word for the church today. And I pray, God, that you would use these moments to, to speak clearly. And Father, I pray that however you speak to us today, that our chief desire would be to glorify you and to magnify you, to honor you, to obey you in all things. And so, Lord, you just take over, take charge, and for all that you do. God, we will give you praise and we will give you glory for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. 
so you can already tell just by the reading of the word here, there is such a subtle attempt upon the enemies here to get Nehemiah distracted and, and to come off of the work that God had called him to do. And I believe this is a great picture of how easy it is sometimes for us to succumb to simple things that the enemy would put in our place to keep us from fulfilling the plan that God has called us to. So three very quick things I want you to see, especially concerning compromise. Number one, number one, be wise and do not give the enemy any opportunity. As you study the scriptures, as you are walking with God, as you are praying and seeking Him, I want you to, I want you to think about just being wise. Don't, and that's what the scriptures say, to, to be wise, not as unwise, right? And so I want you to be wise in how you walk. And so now here is the enemy. And the enemy is tempting Nehemiah to take one simple step in the wrong direction. Did you, you know, know that's, that's where, where compromise, compromise really begins? begins. So, so they, they could, could not, not ridicule really him. They, they couldn't threat him enough to get him from ceasing the work. And so, so now they're going to give him a friendly invitation. invitation. So, so hey, hey, Nehemiah, how about, how about you just, just meeting us down at Ono, down at, oh, no, down at the Starbucks down there? there? And, and we, we will, will just have, have a simple little talk together. I am so glad that he said, oh, no, to oh, no. You get you got me? He, he was, was not, not going, going to give in, in to that, that very simple step that, that would have taken him in the wrong direction. direction. Maybe, Maybe that, that was their intent to say, hey, it's, it's just a 28 mile trip. trip. It, you, you know, know it'll, it'll only cost, cost you a few more days, days during the project. But, but, but what, what is that to such, such a wonderful, wonderful project? Well, friend, that, that is exactly how compromise starts. It's just a small step in the wrong direction. It doesn't seem like a great big deal. Just this past week, a dear person that I love with all of my heart, said said something something that that was very contrary contrary to the the Word of God. God. And you know what I did to that brother? brother. I I loved him so much much that I gently said, let me tell tell you what the Bible says. says. Because Because I don't want this brother just to to err in one little area in in his thinking. thinking. I I, I I love football. football. I mean, football's a big deal, okay? I I love it. I like it a lot. Most of you probably know by now I'm a diehard Gamecock fan. And uh, matter of fact, uh, two nights ago, I set up and I watched the bowl game from last year, all right? We don't win a lot. And when you do, you keep it on the DVR, all right? And you just watch it over and over and over and you wish for more. But, but I remember, I remember, I remember years, years ago, there was a man named Jim Marshall who played for the Minnesota Vikings. And, and so he's a, he was a very famous MVP. I mean, he's, he's a Hall of Famer. And there was a, a football game where he picked up a fumble and he ran it in for a touchdown. The only problem was he ran in the wrong direction. And do you understand that's the goal of compromise? Instead, instead of pursuing God, God being obedient to God, God knowing, knowing Him and knowing His way, that, that, that we just take those little bitty steps. And so I'm so glad when I look at verse 2 that, 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 that Nehemiah saw through all of that. He said, he said, send about guests who sit to me, say, come, come and, and meet us down. down. Oh, no, but they intended to do me harm. He saw through that. He was wise in his approach to their communication. Sometimes when you begin to compromise, there's this thing called rationalization. We think I can handle this. It's not such a big deal, but it can be. And then there's isolation. I know, I know we've got, got a lot of folks, folks on vacation, vacation today and, and out. And, and, and so I want you to be very careful. I'm not saying that folks who aren't here today are somehow compromising. But I am going to say this, and I would go on record by saying this. If we've got some folks in the church and, and they have become a chronic absentee, we need to find out why, right? We need to love them enough to find out why. Because what could be happening is there's a drift that's been taking place. I, I love to grill. Now, I, listen, I, I, I'm not a really good cook at all, but I'm going to tell you, I love cooking stuff on the grill. Now, I've got a gas grill, and it's fine. But I really like my charcoal grill. 
There's just something different. Right? It takes more time, takes more patience, but there is just something different. And you ever notice when you, you, you heat those coals up and, and you light them up and you, you're waiting until they get white, hot? But you ever notice that maybe one on the top can, can kind of roll off and it separates itself from the others and all of a sudden you realize, you know, it didn't do what it needed to do because it got separated from the rest. Do you with me? And sometimes, and sometimes that's, that's what compromise does. does. It can, it can cause, cause us to rationalize things away, away that really aren't so bad. bad. But, but if God, God said they're, they're bad, they're bad, period. Right? right? And, so and so there's, there's rationalization, rationalization, but then there's, there's also, also isolation. isolation. And so, so Nehemiah, Nehemiah was wise was enough to see their intent. intent. And the Bible says they, they came, came to him four times. Over and over and over and over. And every single time, Nehemiah was discerning enough to see through it. He knew that sin did not have his good at his heart. And can I tell you, church, listen, sin never has our good in mind. Satan never has our good in mind. He can't get to God. So what does he do? He comes after those who belong to God. And so, and so Nehemiah, Nehemiah saw that, that his call was, was great. great. That, that is so key. key. Let me Let ask you a question. question. Do, Do you see your call of God on your life as something that is great? great? Is, is your walk with, with God, God one that you would, would never, never, ever give up because it means that much to you? And so I am so grateful that Nehemiah had a discerning spirit and he did not give the enemy ground. He did not take that step. He kept his eyes focused on the Lord Jesus. He, having done all, just stood and kept the faith. He's never guilty of compromise. Second thing I want you to see is this. Remain faithful to truth and do not give in to the fear of man. Stay faithful to truth and do not give in to the fear of man. Well, by the time you kind of continue in the story, they've come to him four different times. He answered the same way. And then you get to verse 6. And he discovers that, that, that now they've got this thing called an open letter. Now, if you, if you go to your mailbox and you, 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 know, you take your mail out, and some of you know what I'm talking about, You've, You've received, received a letter, letter from somebody, somebody or someone, someone and, and you, you can, can tell, tell that somebody has opened your letter. letter. You, you with me? me? Okay, okay, so, so, so that's, that's not, not exactly, exactly what we're talking about. about. That's, that's how, how we would think of things. If, if I received an open letter, letter, it would be somebody, somebody got my got mail, mail opened, opened, stuck their nose in my business, business right? But you've got to remember the context in the day. So, so if, if I were living, living in that same time frame and I wanted to send you a letter, Okay, I'm going to send Craig a letter in the mail. I, I would, here's what I would do. I would take my wax, I would take my seal, and I would seal that letter. Why? Because that letter is only for Craig. He's the only one I want to see. And he would know that it's tampered with if somebody broke that seal. So when the scripture here says that it was an open letter, it means this. It was unsealed and anybody could look at it. You with me? Unsealed. And anybody could look at it. And so here's what they were going to do. They put together a letter, this piece of communication to intimidate Nehemiah. They wanted everybody to read it. And they, their hope was it would somehow discredit and create doubt of what he was doing. Now, I love the fact that Nehemiah was not going to be given in to any fear whatsoever. It was written, it is reported among the nations, and Geshem also said that you and the Jews intend to rebel. And that is why you are rebuilding or building the wall. And according to these reports, you wish to become their king. And I love how he responds to this. Then I sent to him saying, no such thing as you say has been done for you invented them out of your own mind. For they all wanted to frighten us thinking their hands will drop from the work and the will of God would not be done. I love the fact that he remained faithful to what is true. Nehemiah heard what they said and in his mind, I bet he thought, liar, liar, pants on fire. It, everything, everything that you have written in here is nothing but a lie and is nothing but a rumor. And all you want me to do is come to you and take counsel with you? 
You think if I come, we can straighten all this out? Listen, praise God, Nehemiah was a man of conviction. He was a man of the word. He did not live by the fear of man, but he did live by the fear of God. And if there is one thing we need a revival of in America today, and especially in the church, we need a revival of the fear of Almighty God. Not that we are scared of God, that but we, we serve Him and worship Him with awe and wonder for who He is. Fear is a powerful motivation. But this was a negative fear. And too many preachers and too many leaders and too many church members today are so quick to give in to things because they just want to stop the slander and somehow, you know, Make everything okay. Well, I'm glad Nehemiah said, you know what? You crazy. You have made this up in your own mind. There is no truth to it whatsoever. Can I just tell you a few things about rumors that I've learned over the years? For almost, well, in August, be my 42nd anniversary in ministry. Hard to believe that. But there are a few things I've learned in 41 years of ministry about rumors. Let me share three of them with you this morning, all right? Number one, rumors never have a source. You ever notice that? Rumors never have a really good source. Because in here they said, the nation. <laughs> that was their way of saying, everybody is thinking this. That's the person that comes up to me sometimes and says this, Preacher, you always know there's just a certain way that certain people say, Preacher. That you know something's just not good. Whatever's on the other side is not good, okay? In my first pastorate up in North Carolina, I went to this little country store. That was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a classic old school, old timey country store. It was wonderful. And those old guys would sit around and play checkers all day. And, you know, they'd drink Coca Cola and pour peanuts in the bottle. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was all, it was like, Mayberry all over again, all right? I absolutely loved it. But I just know when I would walk in there, everybody would go, preacher, just like that, preacher. And then I finally figured out that was code for, he's here. So I've just learned over the years, when I hear preacher, you, you, you got to discern that, okay? That can go in a lot of different directions. And so people say things like this, preacher, I heard a lot of people say it. And I'll say, well, tell me who they are. I'm going to write their names down. I'm going to go see every one of them. Crickets. Rumors just have a way of not having a true source. Number two, rumors are known for exaggeration. A lot of people, that's what they say. The whole nation. Well, you know that's a lie, right? This is exaggeration. A lot of people. I've asked one guy one time. When you say a lot of people, who are you exactly talking about? You know who it was? It was just him and his wife. That was it. Number three, I've learned that nobody wants to own up to a rumor either. Preacher, did you know? And I go, hey, I'll tell you what, can I quote you on that? And you know what they usually say? No. Because <laughs> why? Nobody wants to own up. So when it comes to rumors and lies, you'll never satisfy the sand ballots, the toe ballots, and the geshers. They don't, they don't care about, about truth. They don't care about facts. Don't waste your time. And I'm just telling you, church, let's never be ruled by fear. I love what Nehemiah did. The last part of verse 9. Look what he did. But now, O oh God, strengthen my hands. In the face of a lie and a rumor. All he, listen, he didn't even try to justify and defend himself. I know this about leadership. If you spend time trying to defend yourself all the time, you can't do what God called you to do. So if God calls a man to lead, lead. He don't have to spend time defending himself. He can stand on the truth, and the truth can defend itself. And so Nehemiah said, you know what I'm going to do? The same thing I've been doing the whole time. I think it's time for a prayer meeting. I'm just going to pray. Lord, would you just strengthen our hands? Oh, hallelujah for that. God, give me strength. Let me stand on what I know is true. The remedy for the fear of man is a true sense of the fear of God. The fear of man paralyzes, but the fear of God will set you free. I'm so glad we sang that today. Free. You can stand firm in the face of adversity, even when the enemy wants you to compromise. The last thing I want to say is this. Compromise is anything that contradicts the written word of God. 
So church, let me just say this very plainly and succinctly. Our standard can't be another church. Our standard can't be what's going on in the convention. Our standard has to be the Word of God. That's our standard. And so I love the fact that what you see in the last part of this chapter here is, is they're, they're making one last attempt. And so they're going out and they, they find this guy named Shemaiah. And so they, they hire this guy. He's a hireling. He's posing as a prophet. But he's a hireling. And, and he goes to Nehemiah and says, hey, I'll tell you what let's do. Since, since you should be afraid and you should be scared, let's, let's go into the temple so we can find safety. Now, I hope you understand that I don't have time to, to dig it all out, but if you will write this down. Numbers 18, 2 Chronicles 26. Numbers 18, 2 Chronicles 26. You go home today and you read these passages and what you discover is there was a right way and a wrong way to enter certain parts of the tabernacle, the sanctuary. And Nehemiah knew what they were up to would have put him in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he knew that it would cost him. And you know what Nehemiah decided to do? Nehemiah said, look, I'm calling your bluff. But by the way, I had rather die than to sin against God. I'd rather die than to go against his word. God had already given them the standard of how that was to operate. And Nehemiah knew that. He knew that it was a fraud. He knew that it was nothing more than some scheme that would cause him to compromise his God-given convictions. And so then you have in verse 11, here's this beautiful response. But I said, should, should such a man as I run away? And what man should I could go into the temple and live? He knew if he went in there and did what he was asking him to do, God could take him out. I will not go in. And I understood and saw that God had not sent him. But, but, but he had... Pronounced the prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this purpose he was hired that I should be afraid and act in this way and sin. And so they could give me a bad name in order to taunt me. And again, here's what Nehemiah does. He goes back to prayer and he says this. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, oh my God, according to these things that they did. And also the prophets Noah died and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. So here's what what he did. He said, Lord, as I pray today, I am asking you to take care of those enemies. i got work to do. And I'm going to stay with the work that you have called me to do. Friend, let me ask you a question. If you are confronted with a decision, what, what do you think? How, how do you think through that? How do you process that? Do you, Do you think, think about, about what your, your wife, wife is going to think? Do you think about what your husband is going to think? Do you think about what your parents are going to think? Do you think about what your employer may think? Do you think about what your neighbor may think? And there are moments that some of those could be a good, good means of accountability. But I'm going to tell you there's one greater. Anytime you and I are faced with a decision, we have to know what God says about that matter. And friend, if you know what God says a matter, that seals it, that deals it. You, you, you don't have to give in over here or give it over there. You can rest assured that you're standing on truth and that you will not compromise that truth. I've had people ask me questions like this. Pastor Ken, do you think it's okay if I move in with my boyfriend or girlfriend? And let's just be honest, maybe... Wherever they are in life, that's, that's a legitimate question they're asking. Now, you know what I used to do? I used to be a smart pants. And I would literally chide them because I, I can't believe you'd ask me such a dumb question. I quit doing that. You know why? I, I never I felt less because it would anger me that they'd ask me such a question. You know what I learned? The Bible says this, the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And instead I would say, well, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just get together and we'll walk through the Scriptures and we'll let the Scriptures tell you what to do. How about that? 
Did you know that works a whole lot better? Preacher, I just got, I need to ask you a question. Okay, what's the question? Well, uh, you know, you know, I kind of, I have a hard time with alcohol, but I've been invited to a party. What should I do? Well, in the past, I say, duh, right? That would just be so ugly. I mean, honestly, I look back and go, that was the wrong, that's just the wrong response. Well, let's just look and see what the scripture has to say about that. Church, We are living in a day. Did you know there was a report done just a couple of weeks ago that says even in evangelical circles that only 20% of those surveyed believe that the Bible is the Word of God. We are living in a day, we are living in a season where we are biblically getting getting dimmer and farther and farther from the truth. We have bought into compromise. We have bought into rationalization. And somehow we believe because we live, we live in the year 2022 that somehow we just need to be more progressive in our thought. Now I want to challenge you today. If you are, if you're walking with the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, double down when it comes to the Word of God. You get in the Word of God. You let the Word of God get into you. And you begin to use this blessed book to help shape how you think and how you operate. And the decisions that you make. And you will be discerning and wise. You may not be popular with men. But I don't really give a rip what man may say. I want to hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I want to finish strong what God has called me to. And I want the same for you. I don't know what you want your reputation to be in this community. I'll tell you what a good reputation could be in this community. You could have a good reputation... As a church and a good name in this community, if you will just be a church who will believe this book and know why you believe it. And that's my prayer. Have you been kind of toying with some compromise? Have there been some things, decisions made, actions taken that that you know in your heart doesn't help you pursue God. But today is a good day. Today's a good day of repentance. Today's a good day of just confession and coming clean. So Ken, why is all this really that important? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because the more I've studied this passage, the more this passage has taken me to Jesus. And I thought about the temptations of Jesus. Do you remember Jesus had been fasting? And he's in the wilderness? And remember, remember Satan, Satan comes, comes to him and he, he tempts him with three things. Hey, if you're God, you can make me stone bread. If, if, you, if you're God, you could, you could jump off the, the top of the church and the angels would come and rescue you. If you, were, if you would just bow before me, took him on the mountain and said, man, look across there. If you will just bow down and worship me, everything you see, I will give it to you. Do you know how Jesus overcame each of those temptations? He would say this, and it is written. So what was he talking about? He was talking about the Old Testament, right? And every single temptation, Jesus overcame the enemy with the Word of God. Church, I'm telling you, the Word of God is still the Word of God. It will last forever. Heaven and earth can pass away, but the Bible says of itself, it will stand forever. And so that's what we've got to read. That's what we've got to study. Some Some of us, listen, I've got a lot of books in my library, but I've only got one book that's alive. And I'm telling you, I'm more desperate for this book than I've ever been in my life. 
And if you're going to go forward as a church, I'm telling you, you're going to have to have godly convictions. And those things can't come by your upbringing or your tradition. They can only come from the word itself. And so I want you to have a good name. I want you to have a good reputation. And I'm telling you, the, the, the way to do that and the way that God will be honored and glorified is if you will become a people of this book. And as you do, you won't give in. You won't be swayed. You won't give in to all the sideward energy that robs you of what? Of doing what God called you to do. Well, the amen goes right there. So I'm asking you to do something today. If you've been compromising, I'm asking you to get right with God. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, I'm asking you to come know Jesus. You realize the reason that the enemy tried to tempt Jesus in the wilderness because they didn't want to go to Calvary. Because if Jesus didn't go to Calvary, guess what? He doesn't atone for man's sin. And if he doesn't rise from the dead, guess what? We in trouble, Right? Because why? We are sinners by nature and by choice. And the only way that God was going to redeem fallen man was for Jesus to, to, to not compromise, but to obey the will of the Father. And he said, everything I do, I do because of the Father. Everything I do. And he just kept going to the Word, to the Word, to the Word. Friend, what a beautiful picture that is for us. There is a work that God has called this church to do. There, there is a people that he has called you to be. And the only way that you can function in that is for you to be a people of this book and not compromise and not give in to all the crazy stuff that the enemy wants us to get caught up in. And so today could be a good day to say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I were, I don't know, we got time to do this. I don't know, it's 11.55. I'll tell you the time in case you want to know. It's 11.55. But what if we just take time today and do something out of the ordinary? I don't even know who to ask him. But how many, how many of these wireless mics do we have available? Six. So we can have six men take six mics. And then everybody, before you leave today, you're going to share with us God's will for your life. And how do you know that you're not compromising? How would you like that? We're not going to do that, okay? I kind, I kind of want to now. <laughs> you understand how important this really is? We have to know why we believe what we believe. And we have to live in such a way that we won't come down to the work that God has called us to. It's too important. Do you know the name and the fame and the glory of God is too important? In recent days, we've all read the reports and we know all the stuff. And there's men and women that have fallen just like this every single day. I don't want you to be a statistic. I don't want you to be another church that goes through another heartache. I don't. I want you to be so discerning that you can see through the scheme and the plan of the end. And then you will stay focused. I'm telling you what I'm praying for. I know this is country, so I'm just going to be country. I want God to put a steel rod right down everybody's back. And we will not bend and we will not bow. But we will be unceasing in our pursuit of truth and Jesus for his glory. The Lord to that end today. Or we just want to enter into a time of invitation. God, maybe somebody needs to be saved today. God, maybe somebody here today has just struggled with sin. And maybe the Spirit of God has shown them today it's just, it's just a simple step in the wrong direction. And the, enemy, the enemy knows that if he can distract us, then it can alter God our walk. And so I'm asking you today, Lord, there's somebody here today and they've just struggled with sin, they've just struggled God with 
just thinking your thoughts. I pray that even today they would just come to the end of themselves and Lord, they would just cry out to you. God, I pray for this body. I pray for this church, Lord Jesus. God, I pray that we would be a people of the book, the word. And that you would give us spiritual discernment through your word. God, we can see through many of the plans and schemes of the enemy. God, we will not get sidetracked. But we will fulfill the mission, God, that you have called us to. To seek and to save those who are lost. And so, Lord, we just pray that we take this time we would take you, God, do with it what you will. And I'll give you praise and I'll give you glory for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand your feet. Just stand your feet as our musicians and Kim leads us. Just whatever God's telling you to do, that's all I want you to do. No more, no less. Trust me. If you need, I'll be here. Trust me. Thank you.